Our daily Bible reading for January 17th. Our reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, we'll begin reading in verse 1 down through verse 17. And getting into a boat, he crossed over and came to his own city. And behold, some people brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Take heart, my son, your sins are forgiven. And behold, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and went home. When the crowd saw it, they were afraid, and they glorified God, who had given such authority to men. As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth. And he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as Jesus reclined at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the, the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard it, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Then the disciples of John came to him, saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them. Then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch tears away from the garment, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins. If it is, the skins burst, and the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wineskins, so both are preserved. A few thoughts for today. Do you ever wonder what it must have taken for Matthew, some versions call him Levi, to just up and leave the life he knew and follow Jesus? It may not have been as hard as we make it out to be in light of the very next verses as the Pharisees make the remark of how they felt about tax collectors. They said, and when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, Why is your teacher eating with tax gatherers and sinners? In verse 11. Tax gatherers and sinners. That's how they were lumped together. For Matthew, a Jew, this was doubly hurtful. As a nation under the oppressive rule of the Romans, the Jews were to give tribute to Rome in the form of taxes. Everywhere they turned, they were taxed. Taxes to travel, taxes on food, taxes on trade, on and on it went. Tax collecting was a profession fraught with corruption. It was not unusual for tax collectors to set their own taxes and keep some for themselves. To be a Jew and collect taxes for the Romans made one an outcast a turncoat, a traitor in the eyes of the Jewish people. Nevertheless, Matthew's choice to leave, as well as Peter, James, John, Andrew, and the rest, was a huge step. To walk away from a job, a profession, family, a way of life, takes, well, it takes faith. In many cases, blind faith. Some versions say they immediately left. We sometimes have the luxury of examining the consequences we will receive should we choose to follow Jesus. For some, little change is required on the outside. For children who are raised in a godly home, it is a natural step. For others whose lives are surrounded by corruption and lawless lifestyles, the decision to walk away is one that involves walking away from everything. We're told to count the costs. Yet, how many of us have the wherewithal to know what that cost is? Will it mean a division of family? Will it mean a loss of friends? Will it cost your job, your home, even your life? Whatever the cost, we are assured that whatever we leave behind 
pales in comparison to what we shall gain from such a momentous choice to follow Jesus. Our question of the day. What would be the hardest thing for you to leave behind if you had to make the choice Matthew did in this passage? And finally, a thought to meditate on today. Think of those in foreign countries who must leave family and religions to follow Jesus today. Those are our thoughts for January 17th.